Welcome back to another episode of Spotlight on the Arts, the show brought to you by the Chigabee Cultural Council and Chigabee TV. My name is Johnny Miranda, your host for the evening, and today we have a great show. Are you ready to laugh? Because we have Laughing Latinos man, Philip Anthony, joining us for this spectacular show. Stay tuned. <laughs> And here we are with Philip Anthony, our favorite comedian. Thank you so much for coming to our show. How are you? I'm great, I'm great. Happy to be here, man. This is a really cool uh, cool setting you got here. Appreciate you uh, having me on the show. Well, Spotlight on the Arts looks to highlight those in our community that are doing their thing, that are diving into the arts, and what better art form than comedy and making us laugh? Yeah. How long have you been in the comedic industry? Wow. So it, it, it kind of it's kind of a, a two part story. I started over 20 years ago in New York, uh, but I was also into into singing back then. So I did comedy for a little bit, and then just kind of veered back into singing for a while. I stopped for about I say almost almost 15. What did you sing? Almost 15 years. <laughs> it's a different story. <laughs> um, almost 15 years, and then when I moved out here. I started uh, going to a monthly comedy show, and um, my friends kept pushing me up, pushing me up, and one month I just went up, and I haven't stopped doing it. It's been about 10 years now, just doing comedy straight. So your friend motivated you <clears throat> to do comedy. What in you thought, what gave you the confidence to say, I, I will be funny, I could go through with this? Oh, I've always, I've always um, loved humor. I loved <clears throat> the feeling of making people laugh, uh, you know, even at my own expense. You know, I've just had, that's always been something that's been, been in me for a long time. Um, and when I was a teenager, I really turned it on at about age 13. It was a, a life-changing moment, and I learned not to take life so serious. And ever since then, it's just been about, you know, look, looking at the funny part of whatever it is. You can always find, you know, humor in life. And that's why I tell a lot of comedians that are coming up, I tell them, you know, stop trying so hard to write jokes, because life is so so funny already yeah the, the content is free to yeah, <laughs> out yeah, there yeah what is that process for you like however though like when you are uh preparing for a stand-up show how do you prepare uh so it's really 100 percent like it's repetition you you know you really have to uh tell these jokes over and over again because they grow with you as you grow as a comedian the jokes grow i got jokes that i did you know 20 years ago that were flops and now I can close any show with those same jokes. And it's not because of the, sh the joke getting, f only because of the joke getting funnier, but because I grew as a comedian, I know how to deliver it. And I know how to deliver it in different rooms. You walk into a room, you kind of got to gauge who's in the room and, and what, what, they're, what, they're, what they're like, you know, what the they enjoy. Like, yeah. yeah, you know, so you want to be able to read the room. Uh, so you may have to deliver something a little different. You don't have to change the joke. Just have to, you know, maybe, maybe say it in a way that you know this room is going to re receive it well. Yeah. How do you think that comedy uh, differs when you are performing in a stand-up show versus comedy in a film uh, and versus comedy in theater? I know it all revolves around humor and making people laugh. Um, is there a difference to you? There, there is, there is. So theater and, and, and stand-up, you have a live audience. It's, it's like I say, it's the only job in the world where you get your, your review as you're doing it, right? So if they're not laughing, you're not doing your job well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the, and, and when you're recording, it's, it, you don't have that. You don't have that immediate response. So it's hard to gauge, you know, where, whether you're hitting with the audience yeah. or not, and you know, so you don't really know. Uh, so I always prefer that live audience. I love that that interaction, the feeling, you know, and the unpredictability of, you know, going and doing that crowd work where you're just interacting with the crowd and and stuff happens that wasn't planned, yeah. and it's just comedy gold. It's always, I mean, not always, but you know, yeah. it, it can be such great stuff that you end up using later on because oh my God, it was so good. So I love that interaction with the crowd. I love the intimate settings, and that's why in my my shows I encourage the audience to sit up front because I never I'm not one of those 
audience, uh, uh, comedians that like attacks the audience or makes fun of the audience to, to make myself funnier. I rely on my material, but I like to involve the audience at times. So, you know, I'll, I'll ask them questions and get them involved in my joke and bring them into my world and we'll, we'll just have a good time. And I know that you've been uh, doing these shows throughout Western Mass, throughout the region. Um, what's it like to interact with other comedians, to work with other comedians, having them? What's your process like in selecting them to, to go on to these shows well, with you? It depends on the event. It depends on the event. Um, you know, like I, I have a company called Funny for Funds, and um, that's a totally different so you know selection process uh, because even our we, we do we do shows that are a hundred percent clean to a hundred percent adult but even our most adult shows are free from like vulgarity we stay away from certain topics that we know may offend or split the audience uh, so we take away that shock value and and we you know and we don't ha handle hecklers the same as a bar show or mm -hmm. a, a comedy club show so some of my favorite comedians that I book for Laughing Latinos Comedy, I can't book for Funny for Funs because it's, it's a different environment. So you know, it depends on where the show is, who I know my audience is going to be, who our client is. That's how I select the, the, uh, the comedians for the show. Yeah. So, so Philip Anthony has two uh, endeavors, uh, two projects going on. One of them is Laughing Latinos, which is yes. uh, shows you put on all throughout Anywhere, from yeah. New York, or anywhere. And then we have Funny for Funds, which you just mentioned. Right. Tell us a little bit about Funny for Funds, because I think our audience would be very interested in learning about that. So Funny for Funds is a company I've been a part of as a comedian, because like I said, we book select comedians. I was one of the comedians for oh, about five years before uh, they came up to me and said, hey, you know, why don't you open a branch in Western Mass? We're franchised now. We need someone to represent us in Western Mass, and you own this branch. So the company's been around since 2015. Uh, we, so it's seven years, but we say five because there were two years that we don't like to talk about. <laughs> right? um, and we've raised over $7 million for all types of groups, organizations, causes, teams, you name it. It's just what we do. And that right there is where my heart is because as much as I love making people laugh, to be able to do that and then turn over a huge check and help whatever organization or person like you have that picture up here. Um, that's $25,770 raised for a gentleman who lost his leg wow. while he was training for a race. Some kid came around with a motorcycle, lost control, the motorcycle took the guy's leg off. And you know, so how do you plan for that? How do you react to that? He's got a ton of bills coming. Um, someone, you know, his sister reached out to a comedian and said, hey, I'm looking to do a fundraiser. And they gave her my name and boom. Wow. She, small deposit, now she, they left with $25,770. That's amazing. There's nothing, if, there, if there's no better feeling. There's no better yeah. feeling. No, it's amazing that, like, you know, every time that I meet artists and I interview artists, it is always a, a very common theme in, in, in mostly every artist that they perform their craft or they, are, they do their craft in the service of others. You know, so there's no fun in being artistic and creative and, and bringing this to the world if you're not going to serve people. Right. So the fact that you have been able to, to use your craft in comedy to, to, to bring about this fundraising program uh, is amazing because you're not just helping spread the love for comedy, but you're also helping these organizations, individuals, nonprofits raise funds so that they c themselves can uh, pursue their own uh, missions. Absolutely. Um, so it's amazing and it's well needed. Um, when you do these fundraising events, do you, uh, how do you screen the process of applicants to? to uh, so it's not a screen. I mean, anyone who wants to do a fundraiser for any reason, you okay. don't have to be a non <clears throat> nonprofit, it can be any reason. What, what I do is, and which is different than most other um, fundraising companies, is you know, we'll, we'll get you set up, like we'll, you'll book the event, we'll, we'll secure the date, you get a venue, and then what we do is what we call the pep rally. The pep rally is where I'm gonna meet with you and your team, and we're gonna get you guys motivated and give you guys our specific formula that we've created over, over 2,000 events. We made the mistakes, we know what works, what doesn't work, we've made all the tweaks. So as many fundraisers as you've done, fine. Just try this formula that we have, and if you implement it and you use as many of the tools that we give you, you're gonna make a lot of money. And that's what that is. 
Yeah. Um, I, I, I like that you also, while you're doing this, you're also connecting businesses yes. and connecting smaller entrepreneurs. I've had the opportunity to work with you in, in the past um, in, in, in some of your yeah. events. And I like that you bring in different people uh, to join you in your mission. So you're bringing me as an artist, painting yes. in, a, in a class. You're bringing other comedians. You're bringing local food restaurants like uh, Bori Chino was oh, yeah. one of the restaurants that you've utilized yes. in your events. So I can see the bigger picture. It's not just helping people raise funds, but you're, you're, you're bringing this uh, connections between community members and community organizations that has a, a, a heightened value to yes. what you do. Yeah, anytime, you, anytime you, you, so anyone who's seen you at my show is not only gonna, gonna connect you with the, the piece of art that they made that night and the experience they had with you. But then they, they laughed that entire night. So it's a night they'll always remember and they, they're gonna connect you with that night, always. Same thing with Boricino. Boricino is, you know, I, I don't just allow any business to sponsor my Laughing Latinos comedy shows uh, because it's my brand. So I connect myself with good people and good companies. And so Boricino's one of them, TWC Auto Body's another one. Um, you know, so these people have not only been very supportive of me, of my comedy, of Laughing Latinos comedy, but they're just genuine people that are out here doing good business. Mm -hmm. and, and they treat their customers right. And anytime I refer a business, they, I get a good review from them. Like they all, oh, thanks, I'm glad you, you know, you refer me to them. And that's what I look for. If I can do that, if I can, like you, for instance, the reason I use you a lot is because when I book you, you're always on time. And for me, on time is not like right on time, it's early, right? So before my door is open for any of my events, everything has to be set up. I don't want to be fixing a light or moving anything when people walk through the door. My guests come in, they just have to sit down and run in. And you do the same. So when they come up, every easel, every every canvas, every piece of art or paint that they, they need is there. They don't have to look around or wait for you to set up. And that's important to me because mm -hmm. it's it's professional and it gives the the audience a great experience. So when we talk about the events we've done together, those are seven hour events. Mm -hmm. Those open at five o'clock. They're painting with you from six to eight. Eight to nine, they're doing dinner, and nine to at least midnight. Or, or you know, 11, they're, then they're um, watching a comedy show. So how do you keep people in one room for seven hours and not get them tired, yeah. right? You give them some- That's an accomplishment. Yeah, <laughs> and every time they walk out the door, they're still, oh man, I can't wait for the next one. Yeah. No one's like, oh, finally, right? Yeah. It's about putting the right elements together. Give them the, the right people to paint with in the beginning, because these are the Valentine shows and the Mother's Day shows, right? And then good food for dinner, and then a great comedy show. Yeah. And I know that you've been doing a lot of events in a location in Springfield. Would you like to talk about that? Yeah, so actually my wife's sister uh, took over a, a location on, on Cottage Street in, um, in Springfield. It's the old limelight. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but she, you know, we, we went in, we looked at it, and got rid of the bar and just made this nice event space. And it has two floors and I mean, uh, I mean, you name it, like we got the, the projector screen and it's, it's just a wide open space so you can decorate it any, any way you want. And she's been in the, biz, in the business for over 13 years. She's a baker, so she's always done custom cakes and all these uh, birthday and wedding cakes. And the biggest problem most of her clients had was like, okay, we got the cake, we got this, now what do we do to party? And when we find a venue, what are the restrictions? Uh, we, we only got an hour to set up and these, these, decor, these decorations are elaborate. You yeah, can't do yeah. it in one hour. So she decided to take the leap and open up her own banquet hall. And she's booked all the way through the end of the year. And it's a beautiful space. <laughs> yeah. It's a beautiful space yeah. and it's adaptable. Like yeah. they've been able to like yeah. uh, decorate it and move things around. It looks kind of like a different space yeah. every time. You yeah, <laughs> and she offers everything from just the venue to Everything from the, 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 the decorations, the, the cupcakes, the treats, the cake, um, you know, every, you name it. You know, the That's food, amazing. we'll let another caterer do that. But as far as anything baked and, and candies and all those treats and all that stuff, and the, she does everything. And the decorations, I mean, her and my wife get together and they decorate these places. These places are amazing. So. And, it, and it's good that you yeah. are all working together. Yes. You know, like it, it's good when you have people around you that support you and that are willing to 
to get down and in, in, to the nitty gritty. Um, what advice would you have, Philip Anthony, for upcoming uh, young people that want to leap into the comedic world and, and they want to give it a shot for stand-up comedies? Or how, how do they get considered? What would you tell them should be their steps? Uh, first thing, don't wait. Don't wait. Do it. You know, uh, understand it that it's, it's, it's a process. You know, you're, you're not going to walk in the first day and be the pro, right? So the quicker you start doing it, the quicker you'll get to where you want to be. Um, you know, no, try to figure out who you want to be. There's a lot of jokes that I've written and I've given to other comedians because it doesn't identify with who I am on stage. You know, I talk about my married life and my wife, and so if I talk about certain subjects that don't, don't mesh with that, it doesn't, it doesn't come off genuine. Um, and like I said earlier, don't, don't break your head trying to write jokes. You know, talk about life. You'll be surprised at how many people go through the same things we go through. You know, how many people, if they didn't, they know somebody who has. You know, and for someone to share that, and then the entire room feels that. It, 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 you don't understand how powerful that is. You know, and, and that's how you bond with your audience. You know, you, you just gotta be genuine. Yeah. If you're writing stuff, a lot of times you'll see that the audience is like, oh, that was funny, but they're, they're not, because it's not genuine, and they know that. Yeah. They know that. Where does, where does uh, the comedic artist trace the line in, in a show? I know that recently uh, it was very, uh, it, it was well documented and seen throughout the, the media. Uh, the, they called it the slap hurt around the world when Will Smith went up on stage and <laughs> slapped Chris Rock yeah. over a, a joke. Um, there were very mixed feelings among the comedic community. Some thought that it was an inappropriate joke, he shouldn't have gone there, and they justified Will Smith's action. Um, other people felt that, you know, it was just a joke. He, you couldn't take a joke. So right. where, do you, where, where do comedians trace the line on? I know one thing you did say is you study the audience. You read the audience, you read the room. Sometimes you know your audience, sometimes you don't, you know, necessarily. Um, give us some feedback on that. Well, sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't. Like, you, you don't know what's going on in someone's mind. You know, you, and that's why I, most of my jokes are about my life. Right? Because you can't get mad at me for my life, mm -hmm. like what happened to me. So, you know, when those comedians take that chance and they talk about others, you know, whether it be a condition or a person or whatever it is, they're taking the chances. Someone may take it the wrong way and, and, and take, no, I, don't, I don't think it was right. I think it was wrong, you know, but I feel like there was two ways to handle that, right? The wrong way, which is what I think Will did, and the right, he was going to see him at the after party. <laughs> that you is could have right. been a man and said, hey, we've got to talk, right? Um, and then, then he could have demolished him at the end when he had his acceptance speech and said, hey, I think what Chris Rock did was so inappropriate and so insensitive. Yeah. And just use it in his speech and ruin Chris Rock's career, mm -hmm, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. that, was, that was the way he could have done it. He didn't go that way. Will Smith, you know? Will, Will Smith probably needs a new public relations person, and yeah. here, here he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. here he is. I mean, <laughs> you just gotta, you gotta think about what you're doing and, and what, the, what, what the repercussions are gonna be. Yeah. You know, that was, that was too big of a platform to make that kind of a mistake, and yeah. you're too big of a star and a, and a, and a role model to, to react that way instead of you know, respond later. But it is what it is. I think that you know, people, took that and they, they took that as an opportunity or the, the green light to go and react to comedians and do whatever yeah. they want. And now you see a lot of that happening and it's sad. Um, comedy is what it's supposed to be. It's comedy. Yeah. Nothing is meant malicious. Mm -hmm. um, it's meant to make people laugh. Yeah. You know, that's really what it is. We, we do it to make people laugh. We're not, we're not doing it to, to insult anyone or, or single someone out or any of that. There's, that's never the intent of a joke. Yeah. So we hope people receive it that way because I have a thing that I teach people called Laugh Now. And Laugh Now is based on the principle that we all go through terrible, terrible times in our lives. Um, and the, no matter what, how different all those times are for you and I and everyone else, they have two things in common. Number one is that we're here today 
So we got through it. We survived whatever it was, right? We just survived the pandemic, right? Number two is that whether it takes a day, a week, a month, a year, we always find a way to laugh about that, right? Mm -hmm. We look back at the pain, we look back at all the stuff we went through, we laugh about it because we made it through. Laugh now is just about the quicker you get back to laughing, the quicker you back, get back to living the life that you need to live. So we need to laugh a lot. That's it, keep laughing. We need to keep laughing, keep laughing, and keep laughing. Okay. Philip Anthony, I, I appreciate you being in the show. Please tell us and tell our audience where, uh, where are you at in the next couple of months? I know you have an event now in August. Tell us a little bit about what's up. Yeah, so um, a, 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 my mentor in comedy, remember I said I, I started going to these monthly comedy shows with a gentleman who was putting those shows together. His name is Artie Robb. He's a local comedian. He's been doing comedy full, year, full time for over 20 years. He's out of the, the Springfield, Western Mass area. Uh, on Mother's Day weekend, he had a stroke. And uh, it, ga it took away his ability to use his right side, and he's still unable to speak, which is the worst thing for a comedian. Mm -hmm. if, you can't, if you can't talk, you can't, you can't share your gift. You can't mm -hmm. spread that laughter. So we've been putting on several fundraisers for him because it's going to be a long journey for his, uh, for his recovery. And uh, we've got one fundraiser coming up on August 17th. It's at the East Mountain Country Club on East Mountain Road in... Um, in Westfield, and uh, it's myself, Bob Montgomery, um, Roddy, uh, Roddy Thomas, and I believe Rafi Gonzalez, which was another yeah. local comedian. Uh, we got together, we put this show together, we're hoping everyone comes out and supports. It's all about helping our, our comedy brother um, through his tough journey and, and recovery. Definitely. So there you have it, August 17th. Let's support another artist in our community that needs it. And this is what this organization is all about. Laugh, you know, we want to help other artists. We want to help the community. Laughter is one of the ways in which it's done. And Philip Anthony is pioneering the way with that. Um, Philip Anthony, where can people reach you if they want to book you? Your website, Keep Laughing. Uh, KeepLaughingENT.com. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it's KeepLaughingENT.com, uh, which is short for entertainment. LaughingLatinosComedy.com, LaughingLatinos.com. And your social media, just look up The Laughing Latino. Um, that's where we're at. And the message I share with everyone is simple. It's all, as I do every show. It's laughter is life. So whatever you do, keep laughing. Thank you so much for, for being in our show. Uh, Philip Anthony, I appreciate you sharing your gift. With, with the people, I think that it is very well received. There hasn't been a time where I have not laughed in one of your shows. Mm -hmm. I love them, and I hope that our audience can, um, can enjoy watching some of the videos that you have on, on, on your social media accounts. Make sure that you follow Philip Anthony and that you get to visit one of uh, Philip's shows along with the, his colleagues and mm -hmm. keep on laughing. So that has been all. Thank you so much, Philip Anthony, for joining right, thank you. us in our show. That's been all, and I will see you next time.